Hello, Earthlings. Tis I, Kestro. Behind the lens is Mike. Say hello, Mike. Yep. In this episode. Oh, Jesus oh, Christ, see where I. Oh, Mike, it's stuck. Just take it off. Oh. Centimeters longer. You always wanted to be taller. So on with tonight's episode. Now earlier in the week we received a letter from a Mr. Richard Carnby who would like to remain anonymous. <laughs> and in this letter he says that our local conservative NP Henry Lacerda Smythe Ope is really OBE. an OBE. Well, o I know how to spell it. I I've got it written no, down. No, OBE. It it stands for. Um, well, it, it, well, B, I think, stands for British. Anyway, it's, it's something the Queen gives you if she thinks you're good, like, but not good enough to be a sir. Anyway, this dude is claiming that this Obi politician is really an alpha draconian lizard man alien posing as a human as part of the Illuminati slash NASA slash New World Order's sinister agenda. He goes on to say it's all a conspiracy. What is? All of it. What, everything? Well, it doesn't go into any more detail, so, uh, yeah. Everything, I guess. Now, the NP in question is beloved local NP, Henry Lacerda Smythe. He has a really good reputation round here. Blind, in his eyes from birth, he does loads of work for the local community. Here, we found this footage of him opening a local shop. And in his spare time, he plays in a band that does free gigs for charity. Oh, that's incredible. How is he that good when he's blind? He must feel the vibrations. Now get this, Mike has been talking to Lodger. I mean, his Roger. And it turns out that he is actually an active member of the local Conservative Party. And as a politician would say, he's pulled a few things for us. And he's managed to get us an interview with the NP. That's great, isn't it? I told you, Roger's sound. Yeah? Well, maybe, maybe I misjudged him. Yeah, Mike, do you think he'd want to help out with the show? <laughs> no. Well, fair enough. <laughs> Mike. Right, anyway, so our plan is to meet the NP and do a sort of a sting operation on him. We told him we're there to discuss the speed bumps around our house, well, Mike's house, and uh, he's agreed to be filmed for an interview. So hopefully we can force a confession out of him and finger him for his crimes against humanity. So this <laughs> week we will be investigating the Alpha Draconian NP. Kestrel investigates... Why? Oh, Mike, my neck was killing me when I got up. Right. So I was looking around for a neck brace, and do you know where I found this? In, In Maxwell's old dog cage. Hey, exactly. Are you psychic? <laughs> Oh, you still not got your hat back then? Oh, right, little swindlers. Do you know, when I transferred the money, they sent me a what's up saying, anyone who pays £100 for a hat will surely pay £200. <laughs> but I'll show them. They're not getting another penny from me. Now we'll see who's laughing. Yeah, well, probably still them. I mean, they've got your hat and a hundred quid now. Anyway. This is my new journalist hat. What do you think? Yeah, it's good, uh, Aggie. You look like uh, a real news hound. Oh, thanks. <laughs> like a dogged reporter. <laughs> oh, I'm sure there's another one. Come on. Come on. 
Go on. Right, so where are we going? Ah, uh, yeah, well, we were going to do the interview in the local maze maze. Why? Well, because you said that, because he's a politician, he's going to be a tough person to interview. So I've got to be more like Pac-Man. Paxman? Jeremy Paxman? Oh, yeah. That makes more sense. But anyway, because it's April, the maze hasn't grown yet. So I contacted a local stately home. Right. And they said, under no circumstances do we want to be associated with your programme. <laughs> Charming. <sighs> so, where am I going? Right, well then, I ran out of time, so I panicked. So I said I'd meet him in the, uh, right, the race course. You know, because posh people like horses, don't they? I said I'd throw in lunch. Why? You can't afford that. Ah, yeah. Well, I thought of a way around it. <laughs> I'm not as stupid as I look. What? What, this is lunch? Are you blind? Yes, it's lunch. <laughs> you know, I'm not sure we're prepared enough for this. This isn't going to be like any of your other interviews, Case. I know that, Mike. I mean... He's really going to have done his homework on you. What? Do NPs have to go to school? Don't be a dickhead, you know what I mean. I wonder where he is though. He should have been here by now. Well, check your phone. Has he called you? I'll have a look. Oh, glob it! Twelve missed calls! Oh. Well, don't put your phone away. Call him back. Uh, can I use your phone, mate? Mine's nearly out of credit. No. Sally, I missed your call. Oh. Yeah, it's a big place. Well, could you see me if I wave? Oh, no. Right, yeah, of course not. Sorry. Hey, up. Kez, I think I can see him. Oh? Right, okay. Right, Kez, you get psyched up, yeah? Yeah. Right, you got to be at your A game, okay? I'll go get him, right? Yeah. All right, you wait. Go on this way. This way. Oh, oh thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for coming to get me. Uh, Michael, Michael, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I have to confess, I rather expected us to be meeting inside the race course today. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> hang on. Hang on. Case! Case, man, are you all right? Case! Oh. What's. Oh. What the, what the hell are you doing? Oh, I was just having a little sleep. Oh, and I started having that dream again. What, the one with Elmo in the playground? Oh no, not that one. The other one! You know where you're Rod Hull and I'm... Oh, yeah, alright. Okay, I found the MP, by the way. Ah, oh, nice one, Mike. Uh, a real, real pleasure to, uh, to meet you this Jeez. morning. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Oh, shut up. Uh, then this is alright here, alright? You can see me okay? Oh yeah, you're fine. Can either of you hear a marching band? <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank goodness for that. Can you see my face, Mike? This collar isn't great for the visuals. No, but it's amplifying the sound perfectly. <laughs> Very good, Michael. <laughs> Cheers. Come on, Kez, let's stop wasting his time. Oh, don't worry about me. Um, is this interview thing going to be on your Kestrel thingy board? Yes, I wouldn't have thought you were a fan. Oh yes, I've been following you very closely. So here we are in the middle of the Knaves Mire, where we are joined by local Conservative NP, Henry Lacerta Smythe, OEB. Henry, welcome. Thank you, Agravain. What a real pleasure it is to finally see you again after all these years. I thought you were blind. Well, yes, I, I am. So I've called you here to talk about the speed bumps. And I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. Now some people that live in the same place as me, oh, not the same house, but uh, they don't like speed bumps. I see. And they don't want them there. Because uh, people, some people, the other people, uh, they're saying why they are there. Uh, why are they there? Because... Uh, 
Well, one of them broke the suspension in Mike's car, didn't it? Oh, we think it did. Oh, sorry. Was that a question? Yeah. Oh, uh, could you perhaps uh, rephrase the question for me? No. Oh, um, well, well, perhaps what you're trying to say is, um, are the speed bumps in your area truly necessary? Yeah, he was. <laughs> Thank you again, Michael. No worries. <laughs> Look, um, speed bumps. <sighs> Lots of people don't like speed bumps. I understand that. The fact of the matter is they're an effective measure for limiting the speed of traffic. And uh, I've had a lot of local residents ask them to be put in place. Um, you know, what with the recent increases in traffic and these last few years. And you, you do see my point, yes? Yes, in interesting. Uh, look, uh, uh, Michael, perhaps for this next section, let's uh, let's close up on me. Uh, I'd like to do a bit of PR, so you understand. Uh, yeah, all right. And uh, I've got the uh, race course building right behind me, yes? Yep. Thank you, Michael. In this age of political upheaval, it's hard to put your faith in local governments. What with politicians being marred by secretive goings-on and mixing business with pleasure. But not me. And what with the local elections just around the corner, I want you all to know that you can put your faith in me, Henry Lacerta Smythe OBE. I am your public servant, and I'm ready to serve. There are no skeletons in my closet. Where are they then? Oh, pardon me, yes. Very droll, very droll. Oh, thank you so much for that today, guys. Really, really enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to be heading off now, uh, unless you've got any further questions for me. Go on, Kez, ask him. Uh, yes, I, I, I do have one. Well, yeah, go ahead. Fire away, please. Are you... I want to know... I demand to know if you are... If I? If you are a... Uh... <laughs> really blind? <laughs> no. Oh, pro-Brexit. No. Secretly a lizard, man. No, none of those. I want to know if you're secretly a lizard... What did you say? Oh, hang on, sorry. Bloody intrusive devices, eh? Devilish for me to use. Waiting for the Braille version to come out, you know. <laughs> that is a funny joke. Look, I, I really am going to have to take this. Um, so could you please... Uh, go away? Oh, yeah, oh. sorry. Okay, sure. How the flip did he know I was going to ask that? And did you hear what he said about hiding skeletons, Mike? I wonder what he's saying now. Well, hang on a second. I, uh, I slipped a microphone in his pocket. Oh, good Wait thinking, Mike. Turn it on. Boorish. No, I'm still here. Now his father was a good friend. But it's fair to say the apple fell so far from the tree it's more of a vegetable. Mm, yeah, oh yes, we found our mole. But he's utterly clueless. Mm, perhaps. He's doing a good job of that himself. Listen, just get a car here within the next 20 minutes. I'll be there. Whoa, listen to that. Who do you think he's talking about? Obviously you. Uh, uh, Aquavane! Aquavane! You still there? Yeah. Uh, we, can, uh, we can continue the uh, interview uh, now. Look, before my phone call, you were asking if I was secretly a lizard man. Do I take it that's the real reason you dragged me out here today? Maybe. Oh, come on, Kez, we've been rumbled. How did you know? Oh, I read your mind with my alien telepathy. What? For reals? Of course not. Look, your friend Roger is really my friend Roger. You what? A little twat? I told you, Mike. I said he was dodgy right from the offset, but you wouldn't listen. Oh, well done you. What, do you want a chufty badge or something? <laughs> Agrophane, um, I am afraid, well, for you, I'm not a lizard man. The whole thing is fake news, another wild conspiracy whipped up on the internet by unemployed middle-aged men with, frankly, nothing better to do their time. But no offense. Well, some taken. You're looking for things that aren't there. You're chasing phantoms. <laughs> like Pac-Man. Look, let's walk and talk. I knew your father, Agrafane. Did you know that? What? Oh, you didn't. I also knew that his mysterious disappearance was very difficult for you as a young boy. I know about the bullying, the psychiatrist, chronic bedwetting. I haven't done that in months. Agravate. Your father, Sir Arthur Kestrel, was a great man and a fierce mentor. 
You would be so disappointed by the, the path you've set yourself upon. Someone of your pedigree. <laughs> pedigree? Oh yeah, you can't see it. Listen, you're how old now? What, 45? I'm 38. Really? <laughs> Best years of your life already behind you? No wife, girlfriend even? No career to speak of? Living in your friend's house? A shed? Clear issues with personal hygiene, and now you're posting videos of yourself being scanned by every fraud and con man all over the internet for every man and his dog to see. What are you doing? Look, perhaps you could just turn the camera off. Let's have a talk. You and me, right? They know me here. Michael, please. Sure, whatever. Why are you looking so happy? Where's Lizzie D. McNovision? Don't be rude, Mike. Henry is a great man. You what? Why are you wearing a rosette? What, are you a Tory now? No, oh, no, I'm not a Tory, Mike. I'm Conservative. Henry invited me to join for a small monthly fee. You idiot. He's brainwashed you in five minutes. No, I... He's a big fan of the show, Mike. He watches it all the time at work with the sound off. Listen to what you just said. Flipping heck! He's got in my head! That's alien mind control, that, mate. <sighs> These crimes cannot continue unpunished. Let's finger him! Oh, Jesus, stop saying that. Come on. Oi! Oi! Oh, what? No! I don't think you can use your mind control on me to join your big lizard party. What? You practically begged me to join! And why would I do that? Uh, well, we were talking, you started crying, said something about having nothing to live for, uh, and then you asked to join. Uh, I think your exact words were, can I hang around with you, Henry? Oh, only because you were twisting everything around in my head, you, you, you mother shitter! Careful, boy. No one calls me a, well, has ever called me a mother shitter. Well... Look, you better back off, Kestrel, or else. Or else what? I must just say I'd hate to this be the final episode of your show. Oh, yeah, thanks. So would I. No, 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 I mean it would be a shame if you were unable to make any further episodes. Well, yeah, I know he would. No, he's not getting it. Like, if you're going to threaten him, it's going to have to be much clearer than that, Henry. We're going to expose you. we got footage of you talking all weird on the phone. OK, this is over. This is done. Give me the videotape, Michael. Videotape? <laughs> Hello, 1993. Henry wants a videotape. OK, you both made a big mistake here today. A big mistake! We make big mistakes all the time, don't we, Mike? <laughs> Get me away from these two losers. <laughs> Hey up. Kestrel investigates. Well, I must say, I have never encountered an opponent as dangerous as that before. Just goes to show, all blind people are vicious. <laughs> well, I think that might be a, a, a bit of a generalisation case. Well, I met one and it was horrible to me. Yeah, but you can't just use one person as an example for all blind people. I mean, take your glasses off and you're as blind as a bat. Yeah, but I'm not vicious, though. Now, if Henry talking all weird on the phone isn't enough to convince you that he is an alpha draconian, wait until you see this footage. You're not going to believe your flipping eyes. Just look at his eyes, peering over the shades. Now, does that look like a human eye to you? <laughs> hey, yo, what's, what's going on? Who are those men? Excuse me, this is my house! He's what got, are you doing? He's got one of these anti bagging devices. <laughs> go, go get it off him! Hang on, he's gone! Fucking hell! Jesus! 